So, Goth my watch just. So, Gothamites, the time has finally come. We have literally waited five years for this moment now. Whether it's gone this direction or we thought it was going to go that direction with the Joker storyline uh, within Gotham's, uh, you know, kind of different universe. Tonight's episode was truly, truly spectacular. Probably, you know, uh, apart from the time jump, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. The best episode out, like, I'm speechless. <laughs> How's it going, Gothamites? Welcome to my Gotham Season 5, Episode uh, 7, Ace Chemicals Review. Sorry, just adjusting the microphone. Um, That was, wow. Boy, oh boy. Boy, my boy. Oh boy, my boy. It was an amazing, amazing episode. Um, I really felt like the pacing throughout it was really on point. And it, it, I, I can't remember for the life of me if a lot of these soundtracks or like the score throughout this episode was, um, you know, used before, but I really, really appreciated uh, the, the themes throughout. Uh, it really added to those build-ups throughout this storyline when Jeremiah was kind of, you know, obviously taking Bruce along this journey. But as I always do, I always just start my review straight away before I actually go into the review review. So what I'm gonna say is straight away, like this video, you know, crush that thumbs up button. It definitely tells uh, YouTube that you uh, are interested in seeing more videos like this because, as you know, sometimes videos get hidden. Um, and other than that, subscribe to this channel for more nerdy, geeky content like this. Just had to get that out of the way. Uh, but let's dive straight into this one because, you know, I've obviously got a lot to say about it. So at the beginning of the episode, guys, of course, we had the fireworks. Now, if you've been watching my trailer breakdowns, um, a lot of people were saying that's Joker gas. And I was like, well, yeah, you kind of kind of say that. But Jerome stuff was more like that because it actually made people laugh laugh to death uh but what i did appreciate and you know i did guess correctly uh, i'm not one of those people like saying oh i got it right but genuinely um you know when those people in the trailer were like it, it was like bubbling from the mouth i thought that it was ace chemicals actual well chemicals and that was pretty neat but obviously this whole imposing storyline is threat of this episode to kind of keep jim gordon distracted and well not really lead like she's not going to stop everything just by herself uh but you know, Jeremiah needed them kind of out the way and to obviously kind of ruin Gotham's reunification because the government were like, oh, we'll help you now. You know, we're going to come in unless something else happens. And oh, baby, this is Gotham. So, of course, something else is going to happen. Now, even though Jim and Lee were used it later on in the episode, this was uh, a big part for them. Um, and obviously this episode saw the return of the Mad Hatter and um, yeah, he was he was really, really good. I always love seeing Benedict. I can't remember. Is it Benedict? What am I, Benedict Samuels? Is it that? Now this may be reaching, but does anyone always think when moments like this happen on Gotham, for example, when Harvey uh, was saying to Jim like, oh, you know, you, it, Bruce has been here or was Jim saying it to Harvey? Cannot remember, but essentially like, oh, he's been here for like five days or something like that, pulling night shifts every night and you see Bruce like focused, like really uh, just, you know, almost argumentative with Jim and I just saw like future Batman man in the back cave like maybe getting a bit too into his mission kind of thing like that you know it is a kind of far reach me saying that but it just it's those little tidbit things in gotham which i really really appreciate just tiny little things like that uh, where i can really see david mazus uh you know being that man one day in this universe i mean obviously more now than ever because we're in the fifth and final season but obviously we had a lot to get through in this episode or they had a lot to put in this episode only so much time you know without ads it's like 40 something minutes um, so, you know, there's so much to fit in. It really is. Imagine if we had more time on TV, how much more could be added to it. But, you know, we're not talking about that. Anyway, Bruce saw his parents. Uh, this is where the games started. Um, and as I said, this is where the soundtrack really kicked in. It really added this atmospheric feeling of seriousness as well but they do what i love about gotham um is that you know they can't obviously use the exact same uh music as like for example what nolan did so well with his films like dun, 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 like the cellos and the violins and all the orchestra they they kind of mimic that sometimes and uh, i really like that titans did that obviously this isn't the titans review but yeah it just it just felt serious shit man but moving aside to other storylines and i'll do this you know for a little bit throughout uh, in the beginning of this review because there is other stuff to talk about but don't worry i'll get to the the important stuff very soon but lee and babs that that made me laugh i just felt like she loved saying baby mama like in her face like it, she said it wasn't to rub it in but like come on i think even though she doesn't particularly care about jim and that was just a hookup she 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 was gloating and did anyone notice that barbara is talking differently but like i'm telling you it, she she's definitely changed her character like almost too much of a sudden i know they're doing that anyway because she's kind of being redeemed 
um, and, and take that as you will with your opinion. And, uh, you know, I don't mind. And I'm actually liking the Barbara this season. This has been the best Barbara we've had since forever. Um, but yeah, she's just talking too differently. She really is. I, did anyone else pick up on that? But essentially, Jim uh, gets Lee's help because she's the queen of the Narrows and the people who got killed at the beginning were in the, uh, a gang in the Narrows. Uh, I can't remember the chest something people. Uh, but essentially, Lee and Jim uh, were going throughout investigating the chemical murders and that is when they got kidnapped. Um, and this is, this is where the fun begins. Because this leads me into saying when, you know, they go into Ace Chemicals, um, I really do have to applaud uh, Francesca Ruth Dodson on her performance this episode. Uh, she really is, uh, even without being, you know, the official Harley Quinn, so to speak, she is the personification of, like, you know, Gotham's iteration of Harley Quinn. I don't know if that made any sense. But seriously, like, just moments... Just the way she acts and, and, and everything like that. Like, for example, when she was pulling out the uh, antenna for, like, you know, to get a signal, she was like, bit, bit, bit. And then she was just, like, all loopy all the time. I'm basically kind of losing my words here. But I, you know, whatever kind of Harley version you like, obviously there are kind of, everyone has different opinions, everything's subjective. But, you know, for Gotham, if they were ever to do a Harley Quinn, which is kind of obvious what they're approaching with Echo, duh, um, they couldn't have done it any better. Or should I say Francesca? It, it is fantastic. So when she obviously came in on the roller skates, and even just like the you have just all that, love it, love it, love it, love it. So returning back to Bruce Wayne, um, obviously he followed the tunnel because that's where the parents were basically baiting him in. The fake parents were baiting him into Wayne Manor. Um, and now you may be wondering, like, well, you've seen the episode now. The whole reason behind this is we know Jeremiah's wanted to be Bruce's best friend, but he's starting to get the idea that that's probably not going to happen. But that doesn't really necessarily matter to him because no matter what, he's going to find a way to be bonded to him. And what I really liked about that is, um, you know, in Jeremiah's sick, twisted way, and I really like the way this was written. Well, freaking done, Sachin. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but this episode was really, really, really well done. Um, Jeremiah was doing it essentially because, you know, it's obviously the most important day of Bruce's life. And, you know, with his uh, infatuation with being so connected to Bruce, he wants to be a part of that. Like, he wasn't there for it, so he's going to be there for it now because he's recreating it. So, obviously, they had breakfast. I really enjoyed that scene. Uh, Cameron, you know, a lot of people are saying, um, and I, this is something I am kind of, like, letting uh, slide over, so to speak. Jeremiah's voice has changed quite a lot, and he is, like, insanely... British accented if that makes sense now compared to what he was before but you know I just choose to believe that with the unhingedness you know they penciled in his eyebrows it definitely gave him a lot more of a creepy joker look I like to feel like this is the evolution of his uh, insanity. Honestly, with stuff like this, I can put comic book logic in there. Just say, you know, in your heads, if that bothers you, oh, the gas that Jerome gave him. It's kind of like a long side effect that is still unwinding, so to speak. Uh, so, you know, also with him being insane and having months and months of being in his own mind, it's just going to get more and more and more unhinged. And if anything, that's kind of cooler. So I just put that down to that. Just a little side note. Also, I was kind of expecting a teeny little bit more in this moment because I was really, really Really excited but I will say right off the bat I really really like when Bruce um, liked when Bruce thought very quickly when the bomb was going off um, and, and he had to get out of there very quickly and convince Alfred how to get out there. So what I mean by that is when he's like, oh, you know, we need, I need to think of something really fast, otherwise we're, we're going to die. Um, it was kind of cool how he thought of like, oh, Alfred, you'll protect me, blah, blah, blah. I, it would have been cool if he just thought of some other kind of way. Um, but, you know, what I appreciate about this is Batman under pressure kind of thing. Um, you know, many times in the comics or whatever, will think of something insanely intelligent and miraculous to get out of a situation and as i said it's what i mean little batman kind of tidbits throughout this episode i, I just really really like now other things in this episode selena and penguin are still kicking it but we got the reveal and a lot of people have been asking this why would selena be you know hanging out with penguin since she was close to tabby well exactly people she is just faking it but you know i love seeing robin lord taylor and uh, cameron beacon over together uh, they're great together and obviously they're still uh, well, she's kind of going along with him in terms of getting out of Gotham, and that is when the submarine comes in. Uh, and we learn a little bit more about that later, so I will get back to that. Now, I was a little bit worried that this wouldn't happen, but thank God they did include it. Thank you, Gotham. Um, they actually added in Selena's reaction. This is, I guess, still talking about Penguin and Selena. Um, to finding out Jeremiah's alive. That was very important for me, uh, because if they just glossed over that, that, that would have been... 
you know, something Gotham has done before. Like, you, you know, I have to admit they have, you know, uh, skipped over things that I felt were very necessary to talk about. And if they would have done this, I would have been a bit annoyed. We're quite annoyed, to be honest. It was very important for her to see that. And obviously she was very kind of triggered. That's when she was just didn't care about faking it with Penguin anymore. She was like, I need to go help Bruce. And if it wasn't for this moment, literally the future would have been changed forever. Oh, and I really need to put this in there. I literally get instant like tears um, as soon as stuff like this happened, uh, happens in Gotham. Um, and I'm so glad we got it. I love Bruce and Alfred moments. But when uh, they hugged each other in the cave, like, oh, it's getting emotional now. Um, it really, it really, oh God, stop. It burns. Jesus, my eyes. Um, this is what I mean. I love the way they've done one of the best things they've done on Gotham is Bruce Wayne and Alfred. And I just, ah, love it, love it, love it. I don't really need to say anymore. So the next stage in Jeremiah's plan, uh, obviously recreating the night. If you're familiar with the night before Bruce Wayne's parents got murdered, uh, obviously like some things, little details change, um, you know, depending on what, blah, 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 a long time. But yeah, the Mark of Zorro. They're like, went to go, they went to go see the Mark of Zorro in the theater the night before. Um, and that is when... Uh, you know, Jeremiah was reenacting that play. I really love, this is what I mean, more batman yes stuff. He's like, oh, I wonder whatever, like, you know, made you so obsessed with this character. I'm paraphrasing here, obviously. Um, you know, I want, you know, is it, to, is it because he put the fear in the heart of his enemies? What does Batman do? Put the fear in the heart of his enemies. Now, Bruce Wayne did very much so um, idolize uh, Zorro when he was a kid. Um, obviously, there's a lot more that turned him into Batman, but you can kind of see uh, the inspiration there. Now, there also is the Grey Ghost and other things, of course. Uh, but yeah, just I like that line from Jeremiah, Jeremiah because it really is um, foreshadowing the future. And one thing I want to say is as well in this scene, I loved Echo in the background, more Harley stuff, just, you know, just being like blah, blah, blah. Like, um, how do I put it? Like, you know, you get a magician on stage and you get the magician's assistant. That is perfect. Um, I really wish, and I don't know if this could be in a 10-year time jump, but uh, Francesca Root Dodson put on her Instagram page that dress that she was wearing. I don't know if you spotted it, but it's insanely, insanely Harley Quinn-esque. And it'd be such a shame, but it might be the case if it was only used for that black and white recording when she was in the background. But um, man, that dress was amazing in terms of like, it's very kind of Arkham City-esque uh, Harley, but like diamonds on it and everything. I'll show, it's probably, you've already seen it on the screen. If we don't see that again, here's a good look at it. I just had to show that. But now came like the crime alley moment where uh, he was recreating uh, Bruce's parents' murder itself. Uh, now for the longest time, people have been speculating that this is Jim and Lee. And I've been like very, t you know, oh, is it, is it, is it? And, and I would have liked to have seen him. I feel like they should have maybe included this in because we saw it like moments before. Uh, you know, Bruce Wayne's parents or fake parents in the theatre watching the Mark of Zorro and then like in the alleyway It kind of just skipped but as I said, you, you know stuff gets cut for time He'd already killed them in between that uh, so that is why as we know from earlier on in the episode This reminds me as soon as they were getting hypnotized. I knew what they were gonna be used for um, So obviously they filled the spots there and you know, this is perfect planning perfect writing I feel uh, you know J Bruce is like oh, yeah Like I obviously I care about these people, but if you kill them, you're not gonna be we're not gonna be bound by hate like sure enough Jeremy I hate you, but like I'm not gonna have this fascination to hate you kind of thing uh, Because as we know with Jeremiah if we can't be bound by brothers We're gonna be bound by hatred and you know He really wants Bruce to develop that infatuated hate if you know what I mean And that would be done by killing Lee uh, Like a very good friend a very good friend to Batman in the comics I felt like they kind of over exaggerate this a bit because in Gotham I don't feel like they've mega explored Bruce Wayne's relationship with Dr. Lee Tompkins But you know I bought it for like there and then for the to not like for the sake of the moment uh, but your know, father figure moment for Bruce Wayne and you know Batman and Gordon and everything like that couldn't be more true um so that was perfect and that would have done that that literally would have done that and this is what brings me to that Selena moment Jesus guys if Selena wasn't there I just love imagining this the 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 theoretical other timeline if she wasn't there quite literally Jim Gordon and Lee would be dead. It just things would have, oh man. Like that, thank God for Selena. I really loved this moment. But also I love how twisted this moment was in terms of Jeremiah's planning um, and the ideas that went behind it, as I said, with the writing in this episode. And it's really like, as I said, jokery. Um, so obviously if he killed them when they were hypnotized, they wouldn't really know. I mean, they would, but they wouldn't be themselves. But what Jeremiah said uh, was like, as soon as the pearls hit the ground, they become themselves and they'll just wake up like internally bleeding and dying. Now that's just so effed up, but so 
perfect for this story. It, it, I really like that. Pacing from this moment onwards was great. As I said, the music was just great. Jeremiah runs off. The, uh, this At the same time, Echo uh, was launching the fireworks. I'm going to gloss over this a little bit, but I love this moment where Jim was being Jim. He, he drove the truck into the Gotham River, uh, so that was all good, and I'll talk about the symbolicness of that in a, in a little bit later, because I really liked what happened there. Uh, but this is where we had the grand moment, guys, where Jeremiah ran into Ace Chemicals and Bruce followed him, and this is where it ends as Bruce likes to put it um, and and Jeremiah says no this is where it begins and we all know what that means. I really loved the craziness that uh, Cameron Monaghan pulled off in this scene this is so self-explanatory and I know a lot of people were saying uh, this scene was a bit too quick um, but I don't know what people were expecting this wasn't gonna last forever like they're fighting and then like Jeremiah would fall into the pit it's not gonna be like a long conversation of lovely Joker moments you know it, it's like short but sweet too long maybe too much of an over load if you think about it and it wouldn't make sense so anyway i loved when bruce was punching him uh and he just kept talking it's it just reminds me and i don't want to draw comparisons between jokers but it is kind of a cool characteristic in terms of think about Heath Ledger when Christian Bale was like punching him in the face and he was just so sadistically to himself loving it and laughing and and even though it wasn't exactly the same Bruce was whacking the shit out of this guy and and he was just like you know come on tell me you feel it tell me you feel the connection between us and if anything this is a very Joker thing but other than that guys the scene was over quite quickly in the sense of you know uh, they were they were kind of battling um, I love the dialogue. It's just like, you know, come on, like, can't you realize it without me? Your life is just a joke without a punchline. Um, and then the, uh, Jeremiah, sorry, Bruce moves out the way and Jeremiah falls in the chemical vat. Uh, I think we all knew this was going to happen. I do want to say, like, I, I give so much credit to Cameron Monaghan and Bru uh, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> Darby Mazous, um, in this moment. Uh, because if you didn't hear already, that place was extremely, extremely hot. They were obviously trying to make this perfect. So imagine all the takes they did. David Mazous was literally, um, you know, going off in between uh, takes, throwing up, and then still carrying on the scene. That's why Jeremiah's makeup was dripping a bit there, if you spotted that. Um, but either way, like, as I said, that that's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and you can only imagine. And Cameron has spoke about that. You may know that already. This moment was truly a moment to behold, guys. Um, five years in the making. Gotham has done things differently. You get people saying left, right, and center, including myself, which they would have necessarily not have made Jeremiah the way he looks and everything with the cosmetic gas. Uh, and then, like, he still falls into the pit. But, you know, you have to think about it. Um, in the sense that maybe for they knew they were getting two more seasons back then they could have done things differently blah 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 billion different reasons but either way um, it still is such a, an amazing moment and you know uh, we won't really be seeing Jeremiah until uh, the time jump because obviously at the end of the episode towards the end of the episode we saw Bruce and Selena uh, looking at Jeremiah and there's no brain activity there I kind of like that you know no brain activity because it's like you know he's been erased and the person who will come out of that will be someone completely brand new. Now, I know that may worry some people, um, but, you know, don't worry, it's still Cameron Monaghan. Um, obviously, this is going to be more Joker than ever. He, it, it, for lack of a better word, is the Joker, but they just can't say it. That's why they've got to call him Jay in the time jump. But it literally is the Joker. I know some people aren't, and I'll address this now. I have addressed it before already. People are saying to me, why haven't you made a Joker leaked pictures and stuff like that? Um, in all honesty... I just wanted to not show that and spread it around out of respect for Cameron Monaghan and uh, the Gotham show. Obviously have quite a Gotham following. I just didn't want to contribute to that, but you still get people literally, um, to put it bluntly, how do I put it, um, ruining the show for other people who don't want to see it on the internet, putting uh, Jeremiah's, or should I say Jay's face in the thumbnail. Yes, like I'm calling out whoever does that. I do not agree with that at all. It's just so cheap uh, to do it for views. Um, I didn't want to do that. I may make a video since it literally is out of hundreds of thousands of people now on Instagram pages and everything like that. Give my opinion on it. And I'll say at the beginning, spoiler, 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 spoiler. This is my opinion on it. Uh, try and, uh, try and convince people who don't like it to kind of like it because I personally dig it, but maybe save that for another time. But for the first week of it being released, I didn't want to contribute to it going absolutely everywhere. I'm sorry guys, for those of you who really wanted my opinion. It might be coming, um, but for to put it bluntly, I just didn't want to um, contribute to something that was getting ruined for people with these stupid leaks going out online. Oh, and before I forget, I loved the shot of Jim, um, you know, looking at the chemicals uh, going out into the water. But then we had that moment in the city, and this is what I mean by the symbolism, if you will. 
I don't know if this is intended or not, but it's the way I saw it. I loved the, seeing the kind of coastal kind of look of Gotham City, uh, like a drone shot, if you will. And we saw so much green uh, chemicals in, in, the, in the river kind of like seeping in. And that was so symbolic to me because it kind of shows and foreshadows that now this has happened and Jeremiah has technically been birthed into the joke, even though it's technically not happened yet, but it technically has. Uh, it's like him seeping into Gotham and, it, and it's like a sign for how he will forever um, dominate its future. For lack, I don't know if that's a good way to put it. But do you know what I mean? I just really like that. Maybe it's been shown on screen, maybe not, but check it out. Other than that, everyone, of course, we had that G and Lim mo- Lim? What the hell, dude? You can tell I've had a coffee because I'm talking a million miles per hour and I said G and Lim. This needs to turn into a meme. G and Lim. Jesus. We had G- we had Jim and Lee, and, and it's evident that they're getting back together. Um, the past is the past. It's time to let old things die. They're getting back together. Um, I, I appreciate that moment. I'm not going to talk too much about this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have Penguin and Riddler. I like how they put the past behind them as well. It's like a running theme here, um, in, so to speak. Um, in the sense that, you know, it's like we tried to kill each other before, blah, blah, blah. It's like they're almost criticizing themselves like what a lot of fans do I like in previous seasons penguin does this penguin does that really does this really does that and they're like right we're not doing that anymore let's just see what happens from here on out not necessarily best friends but let's see what happens and they're all kind of like joining the conquest to leave Gotham and Barbara even got uh you know uh, convinced by that and I believed the reason as to why um she wouldn't shoot penguin she is changing back to kind of like season one barbara before she went evil but just with all the bad archery behind her and and some of the bad stuff as well but yeah basically another thing letting another character letting the past die but that is it guys ace chemicals uh what a fantastic episode forever will it be in my top basically whatever i haven't ranked the gotham episodes maybe i will a lot of you guys want that after gotham ends don't worry i will be doing a few gotham videos like that to tide you guys over um but yeah uh fantastic episode this this video has been going on for a long 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 time um let me know what you guys thought of it down in the comments below i do want to say uh, to Cameron Monaghan, uh, what a fantastic job he's done on Gotham. He's adapted to each and every storyline he's been given. He has um, quite literally, I don't care what anyone says, put himself up there with, um, you know, the, the iterations of the Joker done by previous actors like Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, and everyone like that. He truly deserves a spot. Just because it's a TV show doesn't mean that this guy hasn't embodied the ideologies of each, well, each interpretation of the Joker he's done. Wh whichever one was your favorite, because we're getting a third now in a 10 year time jump. Um, I, I, you, go, you guys know this anyway, but fantastic job. Uh, everyone did a fantastic job on this episode and I couldn't have been happier with it. I really couldn't have. The Gotham trailer breakdown will be probably out tomorrow on Saturday. It's not like a massive, massive, massive urgency kind of moment um, because now on Fridays I have two reviews to do. I have Doom Patrol to do. But look out for the trailer tomorrow. You can do that by subscribing with notifications on. Uh, definitely ring that bell button because um, essentially YouTube definitely don't post everything doesn't post everything to your sub box other things you definitely need to know about in the description down below join my discord server to talk with me directly there i'm pretty active in the server uh so get to know me a bit more there uh you check out my merch shop down in the description below as well there's a very kind of like boba maya design if that's the way to put it um and other things like patreon to support me further and my social media like instagram twitter but i'm gonna sign off now guys so thank you so much for watching i hope you got the mindset of a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.